Today I'm going to take you on a virtual walkthrough of all the different neighborhoods of Vernon and we're starting now. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Vernon Salt Fowler and often it's difficult for new home buyers moving from out of town to the Okanagan to figure out the different areas, where they are and what they all have to offer. So today I'm going to take you on a really high level overview and virtually look at what are all the names of all these different neighborhoods and the sub areas of Vernon. Where are they? A few different things about what each of them has to offer and then bring it all together as to what Vernon looks like. On this channel, we give you the straight goods on Vernon and the Okanagan, your ultimate Four Seasons Paradise. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to hear about all the new and exciting things happening around the Okanagan. We're posting new videos every single week. Stick around because at the end of this video, I'll show you how to get a market update on each one of these specific areas or all of them if you'd like, including real estate pricing. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, or if you're just curious about the area that we call home, be sure to text, call, email us, and just add salt. So let's continue and have a look at all the sub areas and neighborhoods that make up this city we call home, Vernon, BC. This is a pretty good map of the sub areas, and I think it's going to be a pretty good way to show you around the sub areas of Vernon. This is a map that has been produced by the Okanagan Mainline's Real Estate Board, and it's kind of nice because it actually sets out all the subzones. So when you're looking online, if you're looking for different areas to live in, then you can see these correspond with what you're looking at online in the real estate listings. First of all, I'm just going to point out the business center. You can see here in yellow, here and here, that's considered our business center. Right here is Main Street Vernon, 30th Avenue, Barnard Avenue. And this here is the highway coming in from Kelowna. If you go out this way, you head out to Armstrong. And if you continue up here, you head to Kelowna. This is our downtown portion. And over here is Anderson subdivision. That's the new part of Vernon. You'll find a lot of big box stores here. You'll find Superstore, you'll find Home Depot, you'll find various restaurants and the casino, etc. Village Green Mall is right down here. And then over in this area, you'll find Walmart and Best Buy, etc. Plus you can find a number of places to live right over here. And of course, downtown, there's some areas where you can find some older homes and some infills. Now we're going to start our tour in East Hill. One of the reasons for this is it's one of the oldest areas of Vernon and it's going to allow us, we're going to start in this area and then we're going to head counterclockwise around all the other sub areas and end up back in East Hill eventually. East Hill is the area east of Vernon in case you didn't quite figure that out. It's all in through here. Like I mentioned, it's one of the older areas of Vernon. You have a real mixture of little small wartime homes to big beautiful heritage homes and all the way up to 70s, 80s, 90s and brand new infill homes as well. There's a number of ways to access East Hill, say from downtown. You can come out Highway 6 and enter in through 15th Street or Pottery, up Pottery Road or 25th Avenue, 32nd Avenue, 39th, 43rd. One of the great things about East Hill is how easy it is to access the downtown core right here. Yet at the same time, you're so close to South BX over here and a lot of the tranquility that you get out in the country. So to head up 39th and onto Black Rock, here you'll find on Mutri Road, on the BX side, you have access to the Mutri Dog Park, which through the Grey Canal Trail leads down to the BX Dog Park. There's a number of schools. You have Vernon Secondary School right here, which is actually where I went to secondary school. You have Silver Star School right here. And then you also have access to Hillview School, which is technically on the BX side. And then of course down here, you have access to Berstow, which is our French Immersion School. 
And so once again, here we are in East Hill. And you can see there's a number of parks, all these green areas over here. Actually, I should have included this area here. This is Hillview Golf Course right here. It's a nice little par three golf course, restaurant, driving range, instruction. Also around here, there's some nice 55 plus townhomes. Right here is the Crescents, one of the most popular areas around East Hill where there's these nice big estate-like lots with older homes, very beautiful. The famous music school is right in here and Lakeview Park also right in this area. Again, close to Silver Star School. Just gonna outline the schools again. One of the main thoroughfares through East Hill 2 is Pleasant Valley Road right through here that will eventually take you up to Silver Star and to the BX. Heading from East Hill, we're going to go into Harwood. Harwood is another one of the older areas of town, yet it's combined with the newer area as well because it extends all the way over here into the area that's kind of by, well, let's say it's by the new Walmart. Not new Walmart anymore, but it's relatively new. To access Harwood, you've got 43rd Avenue, 39th Avenue, 48th Avenue as well. 48th heads up to Silver Star. And then one of the major streets through Harwood as well is 20th Street right through here. And 20th Street is home to all sorts of townhomes. The great part about Harwood is how close it is to Walmart and the shopping district, the new shopping district. And it's also really convenient on this end right to downtown. There's one school right here, Harwood Elementary, and then the secondary school that would service this area is Seton Secondary. We're gonna move from Harwood and we're going to go into Alexis Park. We're going to bypass Swan Lake West because it's most of it isn't part of the city of Vernon, it's part of the regional district, and we're just talking about Vernon sub areas today. Now Alexis Park is a tight area right off of downtown again you can easily access downtown from alexis park drive and then 30th avenue is right there or you can come down here or 48th and this alexis park drive is quite a major thoroughfare and access to downtown lots of times people will come up 43rd down alexis park and then head out to say okanagan landing Great part about Alexis Park is it's so close to downtown, so close to all the amenities. It also is the main access up to Turtle Mountain, which technically Turtle Mountain right here is part of Bella Vista. So we'll get to that in a moment. And the rest of Alexis Park is a mixture of single family houses, some apartments, quite a few rentals on this side of Alexis Park Drive, and then Lots of single family kind of 70s, 80s houses over here. I remember when I went door knocking when I was brand new in real estate in the 90s and I went through Alexis Park and there was nobody that wanted to move. Everybody wanted to stay put. And it was interesting to me. I thought, wow, everybody loves Alexis Park. And Alexis Park has a nice park right here called Alexis Park. That's where the Vernon Horseshoe Club is. And then there's a school over here, Alexis Park Elementary, which then would also feed into Seton Secondary. Before we head too far out of Alexis Park, I just wanted to point out down here in this area, this used to be called, well, I guess it technically still is, this is West Vernon area. It's not its own sub area, but this is where West Vernon Elementary School used to be. It's not there anymore. There's lots of 55 plus developments, apartments, townhouses in this area, plus quite a few single family houses, straight shot into town, nice convenient area to live. Now all this area here you can see is considered Bella Vista. I'm just gonna have a quick look here at Turtle Mountain. You can come up here through Alexis Park. This is actually, well this is where you access, is through Alexis Park, yet 
it's technically, according to the real estate board, not considered part of Alexis Park. It's part of Bella Vista. So here it's this area and you can see you'll have some houses with some beautiful views of Okanagan Lake. You'll also have some with beautiful views of Swan Lake and then you'll have many houses with views over the city and the valley through here. Really nice. Turtle Mountain is one of the newer areas of town. You'll find all new houses up there, newer houses. Started on the bottom in this area here and then just it, they just keep building and building up here. As for amenities, you're pretty close really to downtown. You're close to Alexis Park Park. You're close to Alexis Park School. There's some nice trails through here. You're right on the side of kind of a, a basalt cliff and it's a really, really nice area. Super convenient to downtown, yet you feel away from it all. You can watch our video on Turtle Mountain at any time. And heading from West Vernon, our first stop along Bella Vista Road is going to be Westmount. A lot of people don't even really know where Westmount is. I suspect it's probably the least known area of Vernon. Where's Westmount? Well, it's below Bella Vista Road and above 27th Avenue. So you would access it 27th, you would access it from Bella Vista here, or you would go out 25th Avenue that turns into Okanagan Landing Road and then go up Allenby Way. So you could come down Allenby Way from up on Bella Vista or go up from Okanagan Landing Road. Like I say, nice tight little area right in here. There's a park right in the middle, Heritage Park, I believe it's called. Down here, you have a lot of commercial properties. You have the Longhorn Pub, you have Buy Low Foods, there's a gym, there's a bank, there's Tim Hortons, there's McDonald's. So very convenient that way to those services. Mixture of 70s, 80s houses all the way up to pretty much brand new. There's also quite a few 90s houses down here off of Burton Road, Sandin. There's a relatively new area kind of right in here as well. They repaved Allenby Way not too long ago, so it's pretty nice. On this side, quite a few townhouses. Graceland is down here at the bottom, one of the most popular adult townhome duplex developments, really nice. You're not too far from the Ellison Elementary and Fulton Secondary School, which are down here. Now from Westmount, we're going to head out Bella Vista Road. And as we go out Bella Vista, we're going to pass a number of different developments. You're also going to go through a bunch of acreages. This up here, Bella Vista, acreages are prime for farmland, agricultural uses, and used to be quite a few apple orchards. Now there's vineyards. Little pocket of houses here, mostly on quarter acre lots. And then down here, you have a lot of acreages and orchards, etc. Another small subdivision area here until you come down here and you get into Lake Ridge Estates. Lake Ridge Estates and then the old part over here, which is considered Rainbow City and this being Lake Ridge Estates, the newer part of the subdivision. Beautiful views. As you can see, you're going to have beautiful views down Okanagan Lake. You're close to the Vernon Airport, which really is a non-issue. It's not it doesn't create a ton of noise or anything like that. Going up, if you can continue on Bella Vista and go up, you're gonna hit the rise. All this area here is the rise development. And up at the very top is the rise golf course. Again, beautiful views down the lake from here. Up here at the golf course, the views are fantastic. At the rise, being a relatively new community, you'll find big, beautiful new homes, plus you'll find some luxury town homes as well. Now we're gonna continue our tour out Bella Vista Road and we're gonna to get to Adventure Bay. Problem is this map doesn't want us to get there. So then I'm going to the Adventure Bay info, I'm gonna to move to a different map and then we'll come back to this one. 
This shows much better how you can get out to Adventure Bay. So you go out this kind of a windy road, I have to admit, and then you get right here, all the homes here on the lake on this side and on the upside, beautiful views right down the lake, across the lake, and just really, really nice. So it's worth the drive. There's a number of beach accesses around here. I, I'm not drawing these where I know they are, but I know there's a number of public beach accesses down here. Then as you get right to Adventure Bay, you've got the Adventure Bay condos right down here. One of the most reasonably priced, I would say, town or apartments actually on the lake. And then you have this new development up here. Tavistock is developing Adventure Bay properties up here. These houses up here, it's all, you know, you, you can always see over the guy in front of you. The views down the lake are unbelievable. Just breathtaking, really. Then as you head around the point here, you'll come up to Canadian Lakeview Estates. All this area in through here. Out here, yes, it's quite a ways from town. In fact, it's 21 minutes, almost the same as it is on the other side of the lake to get to the end of the road. And this is the end of the road before you get to native land. There's a number of gated communities in through here and actually down as you go to the lake, there's also another gated community down there. The subdivision has access community lake access okay I'm not sure if I'm going down the right way but as you get down to the bottom here there is a community beach there's a dock there's buoys there's washrooms and a boat launch so that's kind of a bonus for the people living in this area really you're not on the lake you're not paying lake taxes but you are getting access to the lake to a common beach area some really beautiful houses along the lake through here and then all up here there's subdivision, yet it's not a subdivision feel. There's lots of mature trees that have been left standing. There's tons of wildlife, deer. You don't reach out and touch your neighbor, not out here. So that's the advantage. The disadvantage is if you forget the milk. It's all the way back into town. There's also some nice condos, Peregrine Point condos in here somewhere. I can't exactly tell from this map but there's some beautiful townhomes with incredible views. Now coming back in from Adventure Bay, we're gonna come around here, around the head of the lake. This is all First Nations land in here, and you will find Kin Beach Park and Sandy Beach along here. There is a little RV park over on this side. You'll find a number of mobile home developments in through here as well. Then as we come across Lakeshore Road, we're gonna come into Okanagan Landing. And Okanagan Landing is another big area. Goes all the way down here, all the way over here. So this is all Okanagan Landing. The main road to access Okanagan Landing would be Okanagan Landing Road, which heads all the way down the lake. And if it could keep going, it would end up in Okanagan Center, Cars Landing, central Okanagan but the road stops. If you come up this road, this is Bench Row, it's a crazy road that comes up here but then it straightens out and if you continue along here you're going to get to Predator Ridge and to Kelowna. The other access route is via Okanagan Avenue through here, kind of a side road leading us back into town. Some of the older areas are around this Klinger, Long Acre Drive area. There's some nice single family houses, duplexes along here. And then a nice development here called Seasons. All single family homes, a whole development. And then up Bench Row at the top, you have Beverly Hills Estates. These properties up here have incredible views down the lake and over the lake. Really, really nice. Okanagan Landing also has access to Marshall Field. Very, very popular for soccer and baseball and pickleball, tennis, and there's a big dog park there. This little area here has mobiles on their own land. Nice big lots, quarter acres. 
and you can see Vernon Creek comes here and feeds into Okanagan Lake. So there's a number of homes in through here that are very close to the creek. It's really nice, unless it floods, then it's less nice. This area here is right by Ellison and Fulton School. It's called Fulton View. And these were all houses built, I'm going to say in the late 90s-ish, most of them, early 2000s. Nice family style homes here. This map also doesn't go to the end of Okanagan Lake. However, this is all part of Okanagan Landing. Out there you'll find the outback, you'll find sunset properties, beautiful lake view homes on small acreages. You'll find Dell Cliff, which is one of the most popular places on Okanagan Lake. You'll find Ellison Park. You'll find Cliff Shore Estates, many beautiful homes out in that direction. You are though getting a little bit of a distance from town. Here's your downtown, and then you're going way out the lake. Depends on how close you want to be to all the amenities. It's not that far really in the whole scheme of things. To the end of the lake from downtown is only 22 minutes at the max right till the road absolutely ends and you can't go any farther. The nice part I should mention about Okanagan Landing too is if you head up here, like I talked about, to Bench Row, this is a shortcut, not only to Predator Ridge, but it's a shortcut to the Kelowna International Airport. You can cut off 12 minutes versus coming in here and out. So you can see you're cutting off all this. 12 minutes, it's substantial. So you can live on the lake and get to the Kelowna Airport in a pretty reasonable period of time. Now to get to Predator Ridge, we can't see it at all on this map. To access it, you would go out the highway out here, or you could, if you were out in Okanagan Landing, say this way or this way, you would come up Bench Row Road, and you would come this way, and you'd take the shortcut. Now we're gonna to switch to a different map so I can actually show you once you get there what it looks like. So here we are coming up to Predator Ridge. You come up Commonage here. And as you get into the Predator Ridge circle here, you can either go left and come up to the Commonage homes. You can, that'll also take you to the Racket Club. It'll take you to Pickleball, etc. Or you turn right to come down here and actually get to the golf course itself, which is all right in here, and then over as well. There's some um, 36 holes here. Now the resort itself is right in here, the lodge, etc. Now around Predator, there is just a ton of development, and this doesn't even come close to showing all of it, and they're keeping going. Some places, way over have views of the lake. And of course you can get up here if you keep going, uh, you will get up to Sparkling Hill Resort as well. There are some beautiful homes in here on Falcon Point Way, having uh, views over the golf course. Whitetail is a newer subdivision. Uh, going through, you can come actually over here and you'll eventually make it down here to Long Spoon. There's some duplexes, single family homes. Here in the lodge is probably, well, some of the most affordable areas down here. The cottages over on Falcon Point. There's also some smaller town homes as well that you can get into for a reasonable price. This you can also rent. You can be part of the Predator Ridge rental pool, etc. Beautiful area up here at Predator Ridge. And they just keep on building. It's the same builder that's in Turtle Mountain as up here on Predator Ridge. Now as we drive in from Okanagan Landing, from Okanagan Landing Road or from Okanagan Avenue, we're going to hit a few other sub areas. One is South Vernon. The other is Mission Hill. South Vernon is below Okanagan Avenue. And it used to not be very popular because right over here is the sewage plant, the Vernon sewage plant. And it used to stink to high heaven. If you were driving home every day on 25th Avenue or on the back road, whew, it was brutal on a hot summer's day. However, they've fixed that. You don't even know it's there anymore. 
so it's a non-issue. Now South Vernon is a nice one another one of these tight little areas we have a number of subdivisions of homes it's also you'll notice it's on the creek Vernon Creek comes through here and there's a number of houses on Willow Drive right here that are right on the creek it's also close to Ellison School and Fulton School so it's a straight shot over there to the schools if you have kids and this is a bit more modestly priced homes in through here especially as you get on this end you find some duplexes and apartments etc with more single family houses over on this end most of them are you know in that 30 year old range or so then after South Vernon you head along the road and you head up to Mission Hill now Mission Hill is right in through here oh, and yeah there we go Mission Hill is nice you have nice views especially on this end right down the lake you have views this way over the valley you have views this way over the city and it's an easy access onto the highway and through to Kelowna or to the airport it's also easy access to downtown the hospital is right here one of our major employers and so if you work at the hospital it's very convenient here we have Mission Hill School and over here we have Mission Hill Dog Park and it is a beautiful dog park it's my number one choice for a dog park actually it's beautiful there's some duplexes etc up here and also some duplexes townhouses etc down here on Okanagan Avenue and then lots and lots of big assortment of single-family homes through the rest of Mission Hill some larger homes view homes over here you also have some nice trails walking trails up through here and then there's also another dog park actually up an off-leash dog park at the DND grounds on the opposite side of the highway this is highway 97 coming through here and through to Armstrong on the opposite side of the highway and by the hospital here there's another area this is all considered part of Vernon City itself older wartime homes the barracks for the DND grounds are up here as well, but not technically part of Mission Hill. Some people maybe think it is, but technically it's not. And all this down here is also part of the city of Vernon in terms of sub area. Now, if we head out the highway, so we're on Highway 97 here, we'll eventually around here, we're going to head into Coldstream. We're not going to go into Coldstream today. There is though one area that we should talk about and before we get into Coldstream is Country Club Estates right here it's overlooking the Vernon Golf Course you can access in this manner here or you come out Highway 6 and then access it this way from Kalanaka Lake Road there's also some really nice condos down here up here like I was saying there's some really nice homes with incredible views over the golf course really beautiful it's one development the houses all look very similar you've got an assortment of level entries and two stories and there's actually they have that doesn't show on this map but there's a little access road that you can take your golf cart right down to Vernon Golf Course great golf course very popular nice restaurant driving range and you're also very close to Okanagan College here as well and then again a straight shot out to the airport now we're going to head into the Vernon section of Middleton Mountain. From downtown, you would come up Highway 97. You can come down by the college and you can weave your way through here if you were so inclined, up here and around to get to the Vernon section. Or you could take the easier way, come up Highway 6, come over here to Middleton Way, and you're right in Middleton Mountain, the Vernon section of Middleton Mountain right here. This is actually interesting to me. I'm just noticing that they're including, from what I can see in the sub area, they're including this section, which technically is a section of South BX, this Cranberry Lane, Sarsons Road. You can see the municipality line right here, yet they're including this in Middleton Mountain, Vernon. Middleton Mountain subdivision has been around since the late 90s. You'll see as you come in this direction, you'll see a lot of industrial down in through here and the subdivision is all up in through here so again technically Middleton Mountain right through here 
nice assortment of family homes mixed with a absolute ton up here, an absolute ton of townhouses. If you want a brand new townhouse, come to the Vernon side of Middleton Mountain. There is an amazing selection. And then down here is mostly single family. So Wiki Park is right here. Nice view over the golf course. Easy access to Hillview Golf as well, if you're not ready for a regulation course. Middleton Mountain is also unique because there are so many trails that you have access to. The top of Middleton Mountain up here, this is all a nature preserve and it can never be built on. You also have pretty easy access right down to Kalamalka Beach. Super popular area, nice family location. There's one last area that we didn't cover and it's because it's a bit of an anomaly. It's the foothills up here. Technically the foothills is part of the city of Vernon. You have to go through the BX to get there. However, they dragged all the services up Silver Star Road to provide services up here to the foothills. Very nice area, beautiful views, beautiful lake views. You have views over here to Swan Lake, Okanagan Lake, Kalamalka Lake. Pretty easy access down Silver Star Road to BX Elementary School, fairly close to BX Park. Being one of the newer subdivisions, it has lots of new homes, kind of built again in that late 80s, early 90s, and then right up till recent, they keep releasing new subdivisions up here. So if you want a brand new home between here and Middleton Mountain, and maybe out at Adventure Bay, these are where you're gonna find your new homes. And that is everything. Well, hopefully that helped educate you a little more about Vernon itself and all the different neighborhoods. Click below or contact us if you would like a market update, complimentary, on all the real estate pricing of any or all of these sub-areas that we just discussed.